Hey guys, welcome to Guitar School. Get on the bus. Don't know where you'll end up or if you'll learn anything, but we are on episode 10. Count them, won't you? In the playlist up there about this contraption called a Bajo Quinto. It is a guitar that has 10 strings in sets of two that is meant to pick up like a tuba and bass uh, sounds played in Norteño music, which is Northern Mexico music, which has its roots in German and Polish type waltzes and polkas. Now, this guitar has been in the recovery center in Malibu for all of its problems. And it has finally got to the point where it has come home. And now we're going to put a back on the guitar because the one that came with it is completely trashed. Now, I will tell you, I'm easily going to have uh, 40 hours into this guitar. Um, once we get the back on, then we're going to talk about refretting the guitar. We're going to put a pickup on it, and I'm trying to decide if I want to put a sound hole pickup or actually cut a chunk out of the fingerboard and put a pickup in there and recess it in there, kind of like I do my coffee can guitars. But let me tell you what happens if you have 40 hours into this and you're like an ultra reasonably priced luthier that charges $50 an hour, which is kind of unheard of. Yeah, you're at two grand. Are you going to pay two grand for this? Well, I think that when I get done junk piling it and somebody who appreciates my kind of instruments and the personalized touch I put on them and understands the work that went into it by simply again watching the playlist up there, they might appreciate that. But there comes a point where you see a guitar like this and you're like, that is the most beautiful, terrible, nasty, ugly, awesome thing I ever saw. And you get these ideas, I can fix it, I can use my skill set. Um, it is so bad that I couldn't make it worse, all these justifications. And then when you dig into it, Sometimes it's like that date you went on, real pretty on the outside, but on the inside there's something really, really wrong, and that's what this was. Now, we knew up front that this was a basically a Parachin tourist guitar, and we knew that somebody made it by hand, and you could tell from the wear here that somebody played this. There's even grooves in the frets, double string grooves. So somebody played this, I don't know how it sounded. And you'll remember when we first saw this thing, the top was just bent way down. There was 10 millimeters of bow in the top and it's still bowed a little bit because you know that once you take the back off, when you pull this, the neck will drop down. There's some things we can do. I can steam this loose and put a wedge underneath it. It's all gonna be all right, but We've put a ton of work into this, and all through it, if you're doing guitars like this, there's going to be a point where you're going to say, oh, and it's usually late at night, and you're looking at it going, the only thing that's keeping me moving on this forward is the people on my YouTube channel going, he's never going to finish that guitar. It's the worst one he's ever done. Well, every one I do is the worst one we've ever done, but... There were big breaks here. Um, everything was collapsed. And what we've done here is we've reinforced this. And we're at a point where things are pretty solid. Um, you'll remember this was bowed way out. we got to take it back in. But this episode is going to be about what we have to do once the bracing went in to get the sides and everything ready to accept the back and there is still a ton to do. We're going to get a little creative in how we put the back on. Um, we're going to use a combination of old parts and new parts. 
we have to prep the back by putting braces on it and all kinds of things. So um, this is where it gets down and dirty. Um, there's unorthodox things happening here. And I think if you watch the playlist, there's virtually nothing that we've missed out on besides fine finishing. And we'll even have a finish and we're gonna do some junk piling on this thing. It's gonna be really unique. So that said, I'm gonna bolt this thing into the Stumac workstation. And uh, I think I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way because we're pretty, you know, we bought 16 foot long sections of spruce at Jones Lumber down there in South LA and cut the stuff down and made these braces. So I was happy about that. So we can put that away. We're gonna stack and put some weight on it. But let's get over to the bench and we'll have a look at what I had to do to the sides and everything to get everything ready for the sides to accept the back. Let's go. Okay, we really have to stop meeting this way where we are pulling off clamps and ending one episode to start another, but I think it works out okay. And it's a little bit more efficient than the proverbial waiting for glue to dry. But you're looking at the end result of episode number nine, where we put the glue on the braces and finally got everything back into place. And I would have to venture to say, I think this guitar has a better bracing system than it ever had, which is rough because it happened at my hand. I don't see any loose braces or anything with significant air gaps underneath and it looks to me like the top is in a lot better shape definitely um, the thing we're going to worry about now is there is still a gap to deal with right there and there at the top of the kerfing and then I think that these braces that used to sit here and come up here can be modified by taking out that one piece of kerfing right there and putting an L shaped brace in there so to kind of show you what I'm talking about here. This here used to sit on top of this brace. In fact, there's one still right there and this used to come over and that's what blew out the side over here. All right, let's get set up. 
for the next bit of work. Okay guys, I think the thing to really ask ourselves at this point is, did this come out good enough and strong enough to make this a better guitar? And if the answer is yes, what is it that we need to do now to keep going with this? Or is it time to just give up the ghost? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Show is over, right? Wrong. So I think the first thing we really need to look at is when you sight down that, that's not straight. Um, you can see here, I think that there's a better view of some of the stuff that was going on here that I was trying to tell you about. This brace right here used to be a lot lower and it had one of these sitting right on top of it. So something happens to the back uh, or the soundboard or whatever, these are responding to that. Now, if I can remember, I'm going to show you a picture of Antonio de Torres uh, bridging design, and you will see that that is exactly what it is. So this was a well-respected bracing design. Um, like I said, these look like the floor of a, a dentist that does nothing but extractions office but these sat right down on these carved down braces so when you get the side stabilized and i think that starts with maybe popping out that piece of kerfing right there and putting in something that's l-shaped and then getting some additional pieces in here to hold this together and then getting this up here this crack finalized now this is what was in there on the other side it sat like so uh, but let's get a clamp on this and figure out that we're ne gonna need to bring this side down a little bit so we'll do this I'm not gonna be shy about this because it might decide to cut loose but I want you to watch what happens right here when I bring that side in. You see that's opening up. Yeah, so let me have a have a look at this. That's not too bad. We'll leave that alone right there. And then we're gonna go to work on this crack up here. I'm gonna try to get the camera in the place that is good for us but you can tell back here this was all split wide open we already did some work there but i'm going to try to get this to stabilize itself before we start doing the bracing inside if we can get this to sit where it needs to sit on its own that's definitely going to help us so we're going to heat up the hide glue here and we are going to glue this up and we're not going to be putting cleats on the back of it just yet we're just going to close it up and see what it does and let it dry that's where we'll start okay we're going to want to have some hot hide glue a clean brush some hot water a damp clean cloth some spool clamps some deep throated clamps and a couple of these pieces of wood that we can put a piece or two of strategically placed cork underneath on one side or another of a split so first thing we want to do is burn our fingers on the high glue but get some hide glue all over that opening okay let's do that now i've already tested to see and i've got this open quite a ways so i can get stuff on the edge of the both sides of the crack Now, I don't want to glob this all over, but the thickness of the hide glue here is telling me that it wants to stick 
to that crack like so. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these smaller spool clamps and we're going to start down there at the end. Remember when you start squeezing things together on a big crack it's going to want to run on the other end. I'm going to wipe this off a little bit so that clamp doesn't get stuck there but watch you're going to see the glue start to come up there and I'm going to put all three of them on and get them going where I want them before I tighten them all down okay see that Now watch that crack right there. Let me get this one over just a tad more because I need some room. That one's already trying to close up to itself. There we go. Now the glue is in there, so I'm gonna. It was already starting to harden up. See that? So let me get that off of there. And now I'm gonna take a couple of these and get where I can make sure that they are going to fit. And then I'm going to get some of my parchment paper so these pieces of wood that I use to level the crack are not going to get hide glued to the side of the body. Hey Ken Parker, thanks for your tip about Compton U-Set scissors. You see that wire right there? That wire allows this set the screw to be put in place and adjust the tension against the blades. These are good, good scissors. They're very old and they cut very good. So old scissors are like old men. You might not look that great, but we're sharp, brother. Okay, so I want to feel, is there anything sticking up? Right there, there's a piece sticking up. So, I'm going to put this down here. It will not stick. And then I'm going to put this piece of cork paper on the side that's sticking up a little bit. And then I'm going to put this on because when I squeeze this down, it's going to push that higher side up a little bit. Let me turn this over so it's easier for you to see. So you can just kind of do that like so. And then we're just going to put this on here like so and get it close. There we go. There we go. I think that's going to flatten that one up. And then we will do another one over in here. And get that to stay. This one feels pretty good here, so we'll just clamp it like so. Take advantage of that sticky hide glue for a second. We're getting our setup done.
It's one of the things you gotta learn patience and how to use two hands to make four. That is for sure. There we go. I think that's going to be really important. Okay, now we're just going to flip this over. And we've got a flat spot to work on and a nice place for the neck. Kick this down a little bit. This Mr. Power stand is certainly a good thing. And we'll have a closer look inside now at some of the things we can do in there while we're waiting for, as usual, hide glue to dry. Okay, purists, yeah, I know that the tonal quality of all this is not going to be good, but we already fixed a huge crack right here that runs all the way up to here. So I don't want that to come undone. So my first priority is going to be to put a piece of this quarter inch, sixteenth inch, excuse me, material. It's cut into a little furring strip out of the same material as this sheet that we use to reinforce the soundboard. And I am going to find the crack on that. And I'm going to lay that about right there. And we're going to do this in two separate parts because if I try to bend this around the edge, it is going to want to crack on me. So, we're going to take that hot hide glue and we're going to put it on the crack right there. And you're going to say, well, I thought you are going to put bracing in here. Oh, I will. Don't you all worry about that. And I'm going to go up to this corner, like so. And I'm not going to be shy about this. That is for sure. Then we're going to lay this in here. I'm going to get this at the right spot and let go. And I need to come back to that spot about right there. There we go. And then I'm going to put some on the strip, actually, like so. And then I'm going to get one of my clamps here. This is going to take several hands, I know it, but... sure we know where that is and I am going to work that one there like that and we're just going to creep it up as we need to like so if you have the clamps open to where you'll need to be. And then you can let it lay down like this. We'll make sure.
there we go now I can see over here that everything's gonna be fine once we get things stabilized here we'll just whip this around I'm gonna put a little water on this to let it get okay for a little bit so it doesn't crack on me but once you can hear it I'm trying to do its thing right there but let's give it a little time now well my high goo is still hot I'm gonna take a little bit of it and go along the top of this and let anything that's open let that glue creep in there like so all right it's been a little bit and we are making the turn on this radius and what do you know nothing split out believe that or not now we're going to take our still hot hide glue and just let it run that top edge just like so there we go okay we've got a handful of these side braces cleats struts whatever you want to call them and we're just going to go around and get some hot high glue and kind of strategically place them glue on the side of the guitar as well as the back of the like so if there's any cracks or anything like that we'll place those strategically and then we'll take these clamps here are incredible. Violin makers have some. We don't have enough. That is for sure. These and those little finger planes are the best. Okay. And of course, as always, we don't want to glob the stuff on here, but making sure we run the brush up the side lets everything run down in there we got a lot of these to do i'm not sure i need to show you every one where we have made our patches over here when i come in here i'm going to have to replace the pieces that were knocked out of the equation and we'll just cut these down or maybe notch these to where they fit over that piece of mahogany here what am i doing right there okay rather than having this sit on the edge it was pretty rough again remember what this was it was tapered down a little bit and it would sit on top of the brace like this what I've done is we've taken that furring strip that we've used to solidify that crack running all the way along the back and I've sanded it down can you see that right there I sanded it down to where it will go where the other brace was but it will sit down on and cover that piece of furring strip so I'll glue that on and uh, put a piece of tape on it let it set up a little bit because I am running out of clamps I swear if there were I'm gonna say it again 
those little finger planes and these clamps are the ticket There we go. There we go. Okay, let's start here. There is a piece of the old back right here and what was done is the sides were left to extend up to here there was a piece of furring strip set just below the top of the edge you can see it over here I think um, and what that did was it was calculated what the thickness of that was and that would match the thickness of the back now the back had some braces and there were notches cut in the furring strip right there for that that would come over here but over time what happened is some of the back broke off so the sides are sticking up and in some cases everything broke off down to the furring strip so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this down to where the furring strip and the top of the side match all the way around and then we're going to lay the new back which is made out of birch on top of it when it's flat but right now that won't work you see how it used to fit right there and that would have worked fine had everything stayed together you see that so we're going to trim that down but the first thing we need to do is to get the furring strip and the sides down and there's a number of ways to do that you could use a grinder um, you could use a plane like this as long as it's sharp and works out pretty good you come along like that you could use a parachin guitar maker's knife like they really use to make this and, and you'd be surprised how these things work like so you could use a violin maker's knife which is kind of along the same lines you just like so now it's important you keep these things sharp so if you're going to be a luthier or a violin maker part of your world is making sure that your stuff stays sharp you could use a chisel um, like so and get everything level um, you could use a draw knife these things are pretty cool um, you take a uh, bark off and uh, a peeler but they have these in different sizes and you just come along like so now some of them cut pretty crude especially if your blade isn't right but it'll get you down close where you need to be that's a good tool and then they have these things which are awesome they're called finger planes they work just like a big plane now they're pricey but once you get everything close you just come along like so and they make short work of the of what's sticking up like so another trick to these is to keep going and you don't take things down too far and then when you get really close I've got this really cool saw now you know that when you're when you're filing on the sides they get that <laughs> sound and you really don't want that but you can just work 
a longer area and make sure you're in contact with something else, like over here. And then once you get close, the test is that you simply set the back on or a piece of board here and make sure that there's nothing coming up like that. And then when you feel that something has to come down a little bit more, you can take your finger plane and they even make smaller ones and you just adjust them right to where everything is okay. So the first thing we're going to do is get this whole thing down to where it's flat all the way around the whole guitar. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is if you start to glue the back on this thing and you got this little strip right here, that's not much to stick on. So they got some stuff called kerfing. It doesn't look like that. Um, I could put another strip of furring up here, but I'm going to use some kerfing and this is Chick Flick Teal because I paint it if I use it that way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a new surface of kerfing right here like that. Do you see that? Now I've got enough to go all the way around and we're going to mimic where the braces were on the old top. So we're going to carve out and lay braces like this one right here, but upside down going across the back. And then when we put in our kerfing, you're going to see wherever the brace goes, there will be a gap in the brace, but that's going to give us glue surface. Um, it's actually going to almost triple our glue surface. So get the smooth, get the kerfing in everywhere, and then it'll be time to start pulling this in and get everything just right because I think we've done a lot of work that you saw already to keep everything stable. There's going to be a couple more cracks and then we're going to figure out how to amplify this thing. But that is what we're going to do to get the back on. I've got an idea. Let's use a Parach guitar maker's knife, which by the way, look at this. Isn't that kind of interesting how you could have scraped out with this? Anyway, again, the idea is to get this down to the top of the fur ring. And we just come along like so and this is going to get us really close you see that that one's trying to help us and then we can just take our finger plane and just make a couple steady handed passes And then, of course, we'll take a piece of wood, which I can grab right here. This nice and flat and kind of see how we're doing across there and everywhere. But yeah, it's pretty simple. If this knife worked to make the whole guitar, it might work a little bit. There's some glue there that I don't like, but... guys I think that is a good place to end this one we've got this smoothed down at least the first part of it now we need to lay it on something that's totally flat like a marble countertop or something like that and figure out where everything is and it will kind of guide us as to what's still flexing over here and whatever but it took in this episode you can see it took a lot of bracing and things going on here and leveling to get this where we can think about putting the back on. Wow, 
10 episodes and we still have a few to go. Thanks for hanging in there. I hope that you'll comment below. Sometimes I get behind on answering the comments and I'll get to that. But if there's something you want to see or a technique that you wish that I would show, I got a lot of junk around here. You wouldn't believe it. And I'm sure I can come up with some. So, hey, give me a like, subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you at the jigsaw excuse me, the bandsaw next time.